So welcome to Green Plum Summit 2020, the reimagined digital customer conference. My name is Jacques Eistock, and my next guests are longtime users of Green Plum from Dell Technologies. So, so far we've talked about the software defined data center. We've talked about Kubernetes, the public cloud. Most recently, we've talked about combining infrastructures from both on-premise and the cloud. So now we're gonna talk about the amazing performance that we see from our Green Plum reference architecture on Dell Bare Metal. Daryl? Thank you, Jacques. Um, so we're gonna talk about why we continue to use Green Plum. Um, we started using it over 10 years ago uh, and you know back then it was for specific use cases and we just keep growing we keep evolving um, and as we evolve the infrastructure evolves the green plum database evolves and you know now we're up growing over 500 terabytes and we're you know continue to evolve so we started back in 2010 uh, and really the goal here was to solve a few use cases uh, where we had you know multiple data sources throughout the organization um, and everyone was kind of trying to do their own thing. Uh, and the goal here was really to reduce the number of extracts we were getting from our production systems and to provide a platform which would allow these use cases to uh, do a lot better. Uh, my favorite example is, is one of the earliest ones that came on board, which is we had a customer quality process that took 28 hours uh, to hobble together data from over five different systems and then run the queries necessary to provide that data to our executives. Um, after we brought all that data into our first Green Plum database, this 28-hour process completed in minutes. I mean, literally, it was three minutes to, from start to finish, um, and was you know made it made that not only simpler but allow us to do a lot more of those concurrently. Um, and then you know, based on the success of, of that use case, we were able to bring out a few more use cases to help out the business, and again, continue to reduce our uh, you know our, our shadow IT. Uh, extracts out into these many different siloed data sources. Based on the success of these, you know, simple use cases that, you know, we basically were just trying to solve some problems, people really got to understand the power of the Green Plum database. Um, and it became much more popular uh, as, a, as a platform to solve their data problems. And so we continue to bring on specific use cases uh, to allow us to, you know, complete things faster, allow us to provide more capabilities than we were before. Um, and, and this was really a big hit. And so people started coming on board with many different use cases that we didn't uh, actually intend to. And so we set up self-service workspaces to allow people to really kind of do proof of concepts uh, in terms of, you know, what could this data do for me? What kind of insights could I get into it? Um, we onboarded the data science team because they needed a platform for not only data discovery, but the ability to transform that data and give it better data quality. And Greenplum was the perfect platform because it could do these massive upgrades, the massive updates on very, very large data sets in you know, seconds or minutes versus where they were, which was taking them days and weeks. Um, and so based on that and based on the, the ad hoc analytics that was occurring in there, we started to provide some advanced analytical tool sets so people would then be able to show the results of their insights. Um, be able to discover even deeper insights. Um, and so we brought on, you know, some additional use cases, but most of the use cases that started coming on were ones that were brought to us. And so as this became more and more popular and, and there was more and more demand, again, we had to evolve. We're evolving the infrastructure. Um, Green Plum's bringing the, the evolution as well for, you know, better optimizers, uh, better uh, recoverability, better backups. I mean, these features just keep coming. Um, but now we needed to roll this out the entire enterprise. Um, and so we needed to do a lot of self-service enhancements to allow people to onboard uh, themselves rather quickly to allow people to bring in their own data sets very quickly. Um, this became a primary data science platform um, with the addition and the usage of the, the Python and the R uh, capabilities, bringing those data science tool sets uh, right into the data. Uh, we had to make an enterprise get ready because we were bringing on use cases that required uh, you know, very little downtime. Um, and ultimately, uh, this really became the core of our data lake, right? Obviously, we've got other tool sets that are necessary. Uh, but if you're looking for data, or if you're looking for massaging data in very, very rapid ways, this is the place where you go. Um, so we had to add all those capabilities. We had to you know, continue to enhance the, the platform. And this really allowed our business units to do things that they could never do before. 
Um, so we're now predicting failures, we're automating problem resolutions, we're getting much better and deeper customer insights, we're bringing on more use cases, and we're really uh, adding a lot more you know, AI ML capabilities into those use cases, um, as you can see with the example. Here. So it, we've now gotten to the point where, you know, Greenplum is the core of our data lake. We've onboarded thousands of users. Um, we've got hundreds of, of applications that are constantly running. Um, as I mentioned, we're up at 500 terabytes projected to get to a petabyte by the end of the year. And so we had to evolve again. Um, and we really uh, had a major, major jump uh, for this, this harness phase. Um, you know, given that everything is now self-service, um, we're doing real-time analytics within the database. We've got a ton of ad hoc analytics and data discovery going on, and the use cases just keep jumping on board. And so we really need to scale. Uh, and a lot of the uh, features that are being added into Green Plum these days, the enterprise level features, the ability to do backups without uh, impacting performance, um, are just fantastic. Um, so you can see, uh, as we evolve through, um, these are some of the statistics that you get uh, as, as we move from platform to platform. The diagram is off a little bit, but uh, that's okay, I'll explain that. Um, but as we started off, it was a fairly small Greenplum database, right? It was just supposed to support a couple of use cases. But as we grew and added in more use cases, not only did we add more storage, which is necessary, um, and, and more memory and CPU, uh, but storage really is kind of the key. Um, if you're massing through, you know, terabytes of data, um, you know, you need a lot of IO capability. And so as we evolve in each step, you're really focused on how can we add more throughput? How can we lower the latency of the IO so that our queries could run a lot faster? And that red line is where we added an NVMe drive that actually goes down to uh, at the harness level. Um, so you can see a huge jump between Innovate and Harness, uh, not only in terms of throughput, right? We went from 43 gigabytes per second, which is really fast. I mean, that's a, that's a very fast storage array, for instance, uh, up to 427 gigabytes per second, which is just, um, you know, I call it crazy fast or, or even stupid fast. But um, I think one of the most important things about this is with that level of throughput, we're still seeing um, latency in sub milliseconds, anywhere from 0 0.002 milliseconds, which would be a lightly loaded system, uh, up to two milliseconds under heavy load. Um, that's just phenomenal. Um, you know, if you're talking about doing 427 gigabytes per second of IO, um, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's insane. That's like downloading a hundred movies a second, uh, you know, but uh, at two millisecond responses, you know, your queries are going to run super, super fast. Uh, by the end of the year, we'll be up to around eight, you know, 1.8 petabytes of storage uh, and up to a throughput of around 1.2 petabytes per second. Um, which is again, crazy fast. Um, so I'm just gonna finish up uh, my part of the talk with a reference of what our infrastructure looks like. So you can see over on the right-hand side is our Greenplum database. Um, we've got two cabinets of R940s now. As I mentioned, we're gonna be uh, adding a lot more storage. We're getting up to 1.8 petabytes. So we're gonna add uh, almost three cabinets. We're gonna go two and a half about uh, cabinets of, of new uh, R940s. So highly scalable, and as you as you add nodes, as you add segment uh, servers, um, you add throughput, you add storage, you add compute, you add uh, uh, memory um, to really speed things along. Right, the entire rest of our data lake, as you can see, is, is fully virtualized, even our Hadoop stack. Uh, but when it comes to green plum and getting that raw throughput, um, nothing really can beat um, you know the, the the direct contact with those NVMe drives. You know, 0 0.002 milliseconds is crazy fast. Um, so I'm gonna turn this over to Praveen. Uh, Praveen is a, a senior advisor to the Greenplum platform as well as an administrator. And he's gonna run us through some of the statistics of our current uh, Greenplum database and some of the lessons learned. Thank you, Daryl. Um, I'm Praveen Gorthi. Myself, I'm the um, Greenplum administrator leading our um, database administration team, managing all the Dell Data Lake and the Greenplum footprint at Dell IT. Dell Data Lake, just to give an overview how, how big of this cluster is, we, we are uh, running on a Greenplum building blocks cluster, uh, wherein we, we are, uh, with, with the reference to the 
number of cores that we are running, we, we are about 2,300 cores running with 35 terabyte uh, memory engine. Um, that, that is also expected to double um, very soon in the next couple of months. Uh, we, we do have a capacity expansion that was planned out uh, as, as we are already using or consuming most of the space uh, that was um, built with. And we, we are uh, almost uh, running with a data lake uh, size and volume of about 1.8 trillion records managed in the Delta Data Lake. And um, we do have close to um, more than 100,000 objects in the Delta Data Lake and managed uh, across multiple users. And we have got close to 1,500 user base uh, um, that are using our DDL Greenplum environment, which is uh, Delta Data Lake. We, we, uh, this Delta Data Lake is a high performance as well as high concurrency system. The, this system supports uh, more than 400 concurrent sessions, uh, which were tested. And we, we do um, see a daily volumes of uh, close to 20 billion record changes on a daily basis. Average query counts per day are uh, about 4 million. Um, we, we do see some of the times uh, um, that number also exceeds uh, during a peak window. Uh, we, we run effectively with the resource group, so which is helping um, a lot, um, uh, uh, segregating and uh, um, dividing the uh, compute power so that we, we can limit the number of users, ad hoc users versus data science workloads, as well as uh, some of the uh, 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 IT workloads. The current Delta Data Lake is running with 550 terabyte in production, and it is going to grow and the projected growth is going to exceed one petabyte in the next one year, uh, probably by the next summit, uh, we should be um, used to space, should be consuming more than a petabyte already. Um, mixed, we, we do have a mixed workload um, running on the Dell Data Lake environment. Uh, we, we have supporting uh, data ingestion, reporting, ad hoc, uh, um, querying, data modeling, data science workloads running on the system. Uh, they, there are a lot of data scientists run their data modeling as well as some of the um, uh, uh, um, design techniques in, in our environment. Uh, we, we do have uh, um, queries running on huge data sets and the largest table in our uh, DDL is about 8.8 .8 billion records, uh, which is about 22 terabyte um, um, disk space uh, that, that it, it utilizes on the Greenplum environment. The total time that uh, uh, a query count for this kind of huge table is less than 98 seconds running on a GBP cluster, making it most powerful. We, we do saw uh, some of the run times in the previous cluster uh, for more than 15 minutes or 20 minutes. That, that was just brought down under 100 seconds uh, when we migrated to this uh, GBP uh, building, green plum building blocks. Thank you. Um, from the lessons learned point of view, we, we have managed green plum environments across multiple infrastructures. Uh, one um, common thing that what we have noticed since it's kind of a massively parallel processing and distributed architecture, green plum requires a ton of uh, um, throughput, requires a, a very good effective throughput. And if we have minimal IO latency and uh, through, if the throughput is uh, maximum, we, we can get a very, very um, good performance out of the Greenplum environment where the query workloads can run a lot faster. GPRA cluster, uh, uh, the GBP cluster is the most effective Greenplum cluster that we have run so far. And this has given us super high performance as well as stability in terms of managing all our uh, Dell Data Lake users of 1500 plus users. Uh, there are some of the extensions that we leverage. Some of them are Madlib, um, Datas and GP Text, and PXF. Uh, PXF is a great extension, and it simplified some of our data movement across um, Data Lake Greenplum ecosystem to HDFS, and also eliminating some of the tools um, in terms of and simplified a lot of uh, um, uh, steps in terms of the data movement, and it also saved us. Um, big time dollar amount um, when we started leveraging PXF with the user impersonation, which is a great extension from Greenplum. We, we do use PG Bouncer we, for effectively using the connection pooling um, because we, we do have more than 1500 users uh, and logging and running very um, 
different kinds of workloads running for huge workloads, smaller workloads, and so on. Um, for, for managing the effective concurrency of the users, we use the connection pooling where you can release the connections and reuse the connections, which, which, uh, which is helping us a lot um, uh, with the affected uh, PG Bouncer uh, statement and transaction pooling techniques that we use. We, we uh, use the workload management for managing our resource groups. Um, they, this uh, uh, helped in prioritizing our critical workloads and give give more memory and CPU reserve where, wherever it is critical and effectively also manage the concurrency in terms of how many uh, users we wanted to allow to run and also um, low, uh, um, degrade some of the users uh, um, uh, um, compute power so that they do not consume all the critical workload compute that is available. We, we use the GP backup utility, which is great, uh, which has really um, saved a lot of our uh, effective database availability time uh, because we legacy GP cron dump was um, locking up of uh, all of our catalog. And uh, when we switched over to GP backup, it really proved out to be uh, a game changer, making the cluster more available uh, for all of our workloads. And uh, it's definitely an effective tool we were running with the, um, for backing up the data into data domain. Yeah, uh, I think um, that, that's about the, some of the lessons learned and best practices we have been following. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for, um, uh, for your attention. Thank you so much, Praveen and Daryl, for those details on what clearly is a mission critical platform for Dell. I, I like to say that anytime the size and scale of an organization like Dell makes a big, big bet on Green Plum and, and gets to the size and scale that you all are talking about, an angel gets its wings. So love hearing it. And if Gartner can have a cool vendor award, I think you know we should have a stupid fast award uh, to quote Daryl. So thanks again. Thank you.